This portion of the CU podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Fellows, have you started spring cleaning yet? Spring has sprung and the global leaders in below the waist grooming have the best tools for cleaning up what's in your pants. Join the other 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code CU podcast. Manscaped has the full package you need for spring cleaning this year. The performance package 4.0 is the only tool you need to keep your boys looking and smelling like the fresh tulips your partner wants. To start off your spring cleaning, use the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 trim to get the most precise shave on your hedges. Did we mention it's waterproof as well? No need to worry about watering your grass with this tool equipped with an LED light so you know it'll be a major asset to the new shower routine. Clear your holes and smell the spring air with the Weed Whacker. The nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin safe technology which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. And after clearing your nose, make sure to get rid of any foul smells with the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. Keep your boys from sticking to your leg and leave them smelling like fresh flowers. Finish off your grooming routine with the Plow 2.0, the perfect razor for the finest shave on your face. Because if you're using your lawnmower 4.0 on your balls and your face, you're doing it wrong. The start of spring also marks the start of Testicular Cancer Awareness Month in April. Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. Manscaped is committed to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35 and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer as part of their We Save Balls initiative. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CUPODCAST at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code CUPODCAST at manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life with Manscaped. We got voicemails in, don't we? We do. You go to anchor.fm slash the CU podcast. You go, you leave a voicemail. Hopefully, Pat and Ian like it and play it. Right? That's how it works. That's how it works. Oh, my butt. Hey, guys. This is Taylor. Big fan of the show. Pat, I just have to ask. Okay. When all this Amico stuff is all said and done, are you going to come out with a new version of the CU podcast theme song? Coleco and Amico are feeling the heat. A little bit too many syllables there for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it would be. How, how are CFOs doing? I haven't spoken to them in a while. I don't know. I haven't spoken to them either. I you should gotta, text them. You got to catch up with them. Text Mike. Hey, Pat and Ian. This is Jeff from Manchester in the UK. Uh, I've been listening for years. I love the podcast. I was just wondering, there's possibly more a question for Ian. What would the CU podcast beat him up play like? <laughs> Who would the bad guys be in it and things like that? I hope you get to uh, hear this. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do a beat him up. Let's get an NES and we'll do a CU podcast. Game. Me and Ian, let's do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you would just be, be able to put through. I mean, I, I, it would be uh, scumbag sellers. Uh, there would be Amico references clearly. But the, uh, the, Coleco. Bo- the bosses would be people we have problems with, <laughs> right? <laughs> or parodies. I, I, honestly, let's fuck it. Let's do it. Someone out there do it. Which we'll we have. It. We have plenty of. Um, yeah, that could be fun. The weapons could be like zappers and stuff like that. Well, why don't we think about that before? I don't know. That writes itself. We could write the story easily. I'm not really a fighter. <laughs> but yeah, I've never thought about myself t- in a beat 'em up. Come on, you took you took karate. You said, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I did. You can you can throw a you can throw a, a, a mule kick, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mule kick, a mule kick. I was thinking of horse stance, horse stance, horse yeah. stance. That's that weird stance. Mule like, kick is the where you go back. Yeah, that's yeah, what back. you use to kick it's out a, your windshield. It's a double dragon kick, double yeah. dragon two kick, is what that is. Yes. Next. Uh, hey guys, it's uh, Sean from Dublin, Ireland here. Um, what are you kidding? Have you ever felt like um, any of these crazy CEOs or unhinged employees from these? Um, you know, smaller video game companies have tried asking around about you guys or, you know, trying to, you know, blacken your name or anything. They have. They, could. they definitely but, have. You know, these guys haven't been quite professional in their own jobs and they have it out for you, you guys for exposing them. So, um, yeah. Have you ever felt like that? Yeah, yeah this happens. Uh, They've t- colluded with each other to make these videos. Yeah. We've seen it. Yeah. I, I mean, Tommy has, has, has definitely gone around talking shit about us, trying um, to get us uninvited from conventions oh, and, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, he really thought uh, last year that he was going to make a couple calls and ruin our fucking lives. Uh, here's the problem. When you go to conventions for like 10 years, as I've gone to, going to like 8 or 10 a year, 
um, you get a good reputation, you get invited back. People know. Yeah, people with good reputations get invited yeah. back, like us. People who are known to be pains in the ass, like you, get shut no. off. Especially if they know what a snake you are. And it's like, the fact of the matter is, with me and Ian being so adamantly against the, the bad behavior of Intellivision Tommy Tallarico, we speak for this people people that aren't speaking about it. A lot of people don't want to put up with the headache that Ian and I put up with, or it's not their business to talk about it. Either way. But they agree with us. Right. We're just the mouthpiece for it. So, and so trying to damage a reputation over something like this is ridiculous because people know who we are. Uh, Zadok Pitt, my favorite person, uh, tried to smear both of us. Yes. Uh, I mean, he's tried to smear us both re uh, multiple times, talked shit about us during the Coleco Chameleon, mm -hmm. uh, then tried to apologize for it, mm -hmm. then got mad because I got, I talked shit about him again when he backed up the Amico, saying that I lied to him when uh, he apologized okay. to me. Uh, and now he, these people, go around and, and like these are people who are big in the, like in the retro game scene on reddit they go and they try to turn people sure. against us very sure. quickly and it doesn't work it doesn't work and that's why you end up sure. leaving reddit for 169 days because you're a fucking pussy all right, you didn't see it go in that direction there, but no, there, I have no fear of reprisal. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the, at the worst, people might look at us and say, oh, those guys, they like stirring in a little bit, but we're usually on the side of right when it comes to this stuff. We're not we're not bad actors in the community. We're on the side of the good people. We're the allies. That's the way I look at it. I don't, People don't give me the cold shoulder at, at conventions. I don't know about you, Ian. No one goes, I don't want to talk to Pat. He's, he's bad news. Uh, hey, guys. It's Sean here again. Um, hey, Sean. Quick one. Do you think um, if I wanted to start playing old Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games again, am I better off trying to get in an analog pocket um, rather than wait for any sort of virtual console to come to Switch? Because uh, I've been waiting and uh, it's not fun. Thanks. I love the analog pocket. If you want an analog pocket, get an analog pocket. Um, you don't need an analog pocket to get into that. Obviously, you could emulate and do stuff like that. Emulate. Uh, I don't know that waiting for a virtual console or even a Nintendo Switch online, um, you know, uh, uh, representation of Game Boy and Game Boy Advance is worth waiting for. Even though we think it's coming, who knows how long Nintendo oh. will take with it? And who knows what Nintendo's going to give us on the system? You'll get first party games and the cheap third party games they can acquire. Right. That's so, I, I mean, yeah, go go explore. You know, a lot of Game Boy stuff is still pretty reasonably cheap and you can get a lot of good Game Boy Advance <laughs> stuff for OK. There are some games that have gotten out of control, but how about little cricks in the Ukraine? You can get a flash. Get a never drive. You can do that. You can do that. Uh, next one. Hi, Pat. Hi, Ian. My name is Nick. I'm calling from Southern Alberta in Canada. It's international Pat, day. In the past episodes, you've mentioned both the NHL games and the NHL as a league. I'm just wondering if you still follow the league at all and what your favorite NHL game would be and what system it would be on. Personally, I've lost a lot of interest since they've shifted to a more sim-focused model, but I guess NHL 2005 on the GameCube would still be my favorite. Uh, NHL I, 94 on the Sega Genesis is the only hockey game I ever ever need i love it uh, that said i can't follow hockey anymore i just did 94 have fighting and they took it out 94 was last year with blood and has one timers <clears throat> 95 they took out fighting yes damn it because 95 is great and then i think um, in 96 they added it back 95 plays great but it, they took away a bunch of stuff that people uh like 94 was still pretty fast 95 they had one timers i believe Mm, okay, maybe I had this Remember, I had the PC CD-ROM version of 95 and that was unique because it had not just full seasons Ian, it had create create a character and right do traits because the so that was I played like a full season and I was like this is great I can create myself as a defenseman uh, or whatever so that was fun uh, I don't follow the NHL much I, I I think it's been in a minor resurgence ESPN getting it back was a huge deal because mm -hmm. they basically did not talk about hockey for the past 10 years because the deal was with like NBC Sports so they stopped basically talking and following hockey there wasn't even a hockey show now there's a daily hockey show or like a few years ago he told me that I'd be like a daily hockey show so it's good to get back out there and I'm glad that my Rangers are doing well but I don't follow hockey as much as I should there but it's it, but it is the one sport i watch that i like i like what's going on because i used to play you know floor hockey so i know the strategy and look at it I, that's why i like watching it uh i would like four or five more here hey pat hey ian if you guys didn't have a huge collection like you guys have right now and you guys were looking at the american prices as opposed to the japanese prices would you guys go with the japanese prints instead of the american prints yes yeah, for, for, for older stuff, absolutely. Sure. Because language matters very little for most 
you know, retro games, a lot of platformers and action games you can get by without knowing what's going on. You can, uh, you know, or there's very little menus or a lot of times even the menus are translated into simple English. Um, you know, and then you just buy the Japanese versions and then for the RPGs that you would want to play or something like that, sure, you would go ahead and buy the US version. But um, that's kind of how I, I, I did my whole Turbo Graphics PC Engine collection was I, I bought the Ease games and stuff like that. I bought the English versions, mm -hmm. but everything else I buy the Japanese version of, even if there is a US release, because it's way cheaper. Sure. Hey, Pat and Ian, this is Tyler from Florida again. I was just wondering if, since Ian likes D&D &D so much, if y'all ever do a D&D &D podcast, like a retro gamers D&D &D thing with James Rolfe and you guys and whoever else. I can see Ian being a barbarian. I can see James being a artificer or something. What the hell's an artificer? Uh, uh, they work with artifacts. Okay. Um, and you guys go up against laughing, joking numb nuts now under new management Tomas Tallarina. How does that sound? What Take am care, I? Guys, you guys are awesome. What character would I be? I don't know. I don't know what character you would be. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I would never go out of my way to set it up. But if someone asked me to sit in on a and d session uh, for like a one shot or something like that and record it, I probably would. It might be fun. There's strategy involved, right? I like it. I like D&D. &D, Lots of strategy. And you, you tell stories. Just, I, yeah, I do, do well at that. Hey, Pat. When are we going to get some They Butchered My Cornhole shirts printed up? Thanks. <laughs> get that for PRG? Yeah. They Butchered My Cornhole? Hi, this is CJ from Indiana. Thanks, I love the podcast, guys. My daughter is three years old and has taken an interest in Super Monkey Ball. What would you recommend as some other early start video games? That's all. Early start video games. I mean, I could see Super Monkey Ball being a lot of fun just because it's like instant reaction. You know, okay. you, you move the level around, the ball moves around. So even if you're not winning, um, it would be uh, a good time. Uh, Kirby games are also good early start video games. They're not excessively difficult. Um, they're bright and they're colorful and they're fun. And I think it's, you know, fun enough for a kid to probably play around with. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I would suggest. Oh, for kids, obviously, the I mean, it, three, three years old, if we're not just talking retro games, any of the Lego games. Oh, sure. Any, any of the old Lego games. I, I cannot tell you how successful those are with parents, with young kids. I used to sell them by the grip every single day at Luna. Um, they are cheap. They are fun. They are almost always uh, two player cooperative and uh, you can play the game and progress while your daughter is, you know, swinging a lightsaber around and, and screwing around having a wonderful time. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah, those nice. games are really, really good for that, too. Sure. They're not super hard. About Lego Racers too. That's a I don't one. know that one very well. I, played, I was like the first one I played for a Lego game. Mm -mm. It was like one of the first. Ones. I know it was popular on the sixty four, but I never played it. I played it on. Oh God, was it the PC? I might have a PC version. I might have. I might have had it for wow, uh, was it? IRC. Do a couple more. Hey, Pat and Ian, this is uh, Vince again from Northern California. If you guys could pick any video game to make into a full length uh, motion picture, Final Fight. What would that game be? Cheers, guys. If you can honestly pick one video game to make into a movie. Uh, Killer 7 would be really neat to see if they could turn that into an interesting movie. Um, it's one of my favorite games, and it's one of my favorite games almost entirely because of the story and the interesting narrative experience that the game uh, provides. As a game, it's pretty simple and straightforward. It's fun, but it's not exactly anything you'd, you'd write home about. But the story itself, I think, could make an interesting movie. Okay. Um, hmm. What's a good one that would make a, a good movie? Um, I, I honestly think Ian's going to say you're crazy. I honestly thought, due to the structure, you could have made a Legend of Zelda movie, like Lord of the Rings. You could have. Yeah. You could have done it. I think you could have done it, like a three-hour movie. I disagree there. I just don't think Zelda would ever translate well to a movie. Really? Yeah. Okay. You don't want the guy talking. You know, yeah. Little elf. Uh, you want to do one more? You want to check in with, with Let's a check in. <laughs> Ian's done. Ian's had it. Have you two jerk-offs ever heard of inflation before? Apparently not. The way you're complaining about the Amico and WADA. It's simple economics, guys. Prices go up. Wages 
sometimes go up. Well, not for the people who work for us. <laughs> they actually take pay cuts, like Tom Brady, because that's what it takes to succeed, okay, Bills fan? I heard Ian last week saying, play the Amico alone sounds really depressing. Listen, when you play the Amico, you are never alone. Because God is always there. Okay, <laughs> I've tried to talk to you about God before, but you know what? At this point, you can just burn in hell for all I care. Use the flames to light your joints. And hey, maybe you'll even get to come back with superpowers like Spawn. That would be a great comic. Didn't somebody already start a comic about you? I'm going to pick up right where they left off. I'm going to sit down and draw Hell Spawn Ian with all the stuff I got from Crayola. Let's start with Cape. Let's give you a nice cape made out of hemp. Ooh, yeah. Style <laughs> Nobody disturb me for a while. No, oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tom's having a great old time. He, I guess, He's having a great you. time. Yeah. Uh, Hell spawn uh, Ian.